I received this quadcopter type JJROC H106 from the online retailer Geek Buying. It is a low priced remote controlled quadcopter that lets you get started with this fascinating class of aircraft without having to break the bank. In addition to the aircraft, the package contains the necessary remote control, a second battery, spare propellers and a bag useful to store and carry it all around. The quadcopter's chassis and arms are made of high impact plastic and the rotor blades can fold back in case of contact with an obstacle. Overall, the drone is very rigid and can withstand common crashes without damage. I tried that successfully several times, involuntarily. Due to the weight of well under 250 grams, the quadcopter can be flown without an EU drone license. However, the operation is not hazard free as the sharp edged rotor blades are not completely shielded. The gadget is not foolproof, the pilot should have common sense. The low weight of the aircraft of just 125 grams also contributes to the resistance to damage. The H106 has two cameras. The main camera is located at the front of the chassis and can be tilted from pointing horizontally... ...gradually going to the downwards view. However, the motor used for this is not implemented for image stabilization of the camera during flight. A second camera is located on the underside and faces vertically downwards. More about the image quality later in the video. The structure at the top of the chassis contains infrared transmitting and receiving diodes, with the help of which obstacles in the path of flight are to be detected. However, one should not expect miracles from the obstacle avoidance implemented in this way. The same applies to gimmicks like gesture recognition and more. The features are supposedly somehow available in principle. But if they are implemented at all, so only in a very rudimentary manner. According to the price tag, the H106 is a device for having fun in manually controlling a flying object, not for Hollywood ready film productions or autopilot functions. Let's have a look at the startup procedures. Folded up for transport, the arms must first be brought into flight position. And then the, unfortunately not completely covering, rotor protections have to be attached. The two batteries in the package have a nominal voltage of 3.7V and a capacity of 1800mAh. The charging electronics is integrated in the plastic housing so that the batteries can be charged using any micro USB cable. The charging process takes about 2 hours. The charged battery snaps into the slot in the drone. The remote control requires two micro batteries or as shown here, rechargeable batteries that are not included in the delivery. The quadcopter is switched on using the push button on top of the chassis, the front LEDs start flashing. The remote control has a slight switch to turn it on. To activate the radio link to the drone, the throttle lever must be pushed all the way forward... ...and then be moved all the way back. If full throttle is then given again, the rotors begin to turn slowly to signal that the drone is ready for takeoff. After that, 
any acceleration cause the drone to rise and the fun can begin. You can do this with safety goggles on your nose, a lot of practice as well as scratched furniture, walls and fingers indoors, but this is not really recommended. Again, the H106 is an aircraft and learning to fly by remote control is a lot of fun. It takes some practice before your brain switches in time when the drone is rotated around its vertical axis, because the control reacts mirrored as soon as the drone camera points to the pilot. The first hoverflight training should therefore take place with the camera pointing away from the pilot, of course better outside of your own four walls. The training session lasts about 10 minutes at a time, then the battery is empty and has to be recharged. Even if the built-in cameras are far from delivering cinema quality, they at least allow for the drone view being transferred to a smartphone. To do this, an app must first be installed. If the H106 is switched on, it acts as a VLAN access point to which the smartphone must be connected. If the app is now started, the live image can be received from the camera and the stream can be saved on the smartphone. The drone can also be controlled via the app, but the remote control is definitely the better choice. The only function I've used in the app is calibrating the gyroscope, as there doesn't seem to be a button for that on the remote control. To do this, the drone must be on a flat surface and the corresponding button on the app must be tapped on. The LEDs flash quickly for a short time and with that, the process is complete. Prepared in this way, I now start a camera flight with the GGRC drone to conclude this review. Both the still images as well as the video stream of both cameras transmitted to the smartphone app are saved with a resolution of 2048x1080 pixels. However, this in no way corresponds to the physical resolution of the cameras, the image data is scaled up by software. As said before, this is a budget drone, so realistically you can only expect an image quality at the lower end of the scale. The image quality of the camera mounted on the underside is significantly worse than that of the front, tiltable camera. Due to the lack of mechanical image stabilization, close-ups are extremely wiggly. Again, recording shots worthy of Hollywood are simply not to be expected in this price range. If the quadcopter climbs higher, the movement of the drone becomes less important and the aerial video stream appears with a more stable horizon.
good, image quality looks different, but having a view live from the drone on your smartphone increases the fun of flying immensely. The JGROC H106 is fun stuff for small money, nothing more, but also nothing less. If you want to discover the pilot in you for just a few bucks, with the JGROC H106 you can buy a suitable training device. I thank Geek Buying for this flying fun gadget. More information about the quadcopter as well as many high resolution photos from all angles can be found on how open is this gadget, have a click. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.